here. We're down here at the 2018 Sheep Show with the one and only Kenton Carruth from First Light. First Light's went through some changes, as you well know. Uh, they went direct. They uh, changed. They came out with 30 new pieces, and uh, so some people keep saying they've changed their sizing. So Kenton's here to dispel the myths and uh, talk about some truths. So Kenton, what's up with the direct? How what was that? How was that decision made? And you know. We basically spent a lot of time, a lot of money trying to figure out if it was a good move for us, but basically, organically, our whole business was shifting that direction regardless. I mean, frankly, we were at almost 70% direct without even, you know, pushing it. So it was just, after a while, it was like, wow, this is, that was where our business was going, it was where it was growing, and it just made a lot more sense to not have to go to a bunch of the trade shows and they're, they're expensive and there's a lot of other things that go along with that but yeah i mean we had it was a bummer we had a lot of you know great dealers and uh, um, but at the end of the day that was really a, kind of a small part of the part of the company so the question with direct the biggest question we hear is will they will there be a price decrease yes yes do you, is it a blanket percentage? Is it piece by piece? Piece by piece. Piece, piece by, by piece. piece. Okay. We aren't even, honestly, like on the Merino stuff, we haven't gotten final kind of pricing. It's difficult with Merino because the price is, you know, it goes up, it goes down. And um, we, so it's we're not, pretty sure where that's going to land, actually. I take that back. We're pretty sure that's going to land. But um, I either down, we, everything's going to go down to a certain extent. Some things. Gotcha definitely more than others and our costing on the merino has gone way up so that's probably going to go down less i still think it's going to go down right but like you know the cost of merinos well so merinos up and down where the price of nylon and the other parts are pretty much level totally gotcha exactly. so that that makes it easier for us to fix on you know gotcha but um for sure uh yeah it's going to be a decrease you sure. told me the price and we don't have to go with the actual prices but you told me the price about where the catalyst is going to land and that is a steal the catalyst jacket price is a steal well, thanks. We I, we're, we have had that piece in testing for well over two years. We had prototypes one and two of that. I mean, heck, Aaron and I were wearing prototypes one and two of that in Alberta the year before last year, right. and started like I mean, and where we ended up was probably five or six, and I, I love it. And I am not a soft shell guy. Like I was. I'm not either. I, I never kind of. I just didn't see where it fit in, and after you know, kind of trying a bunch of, literally like 10 or 15 different ones out, we kind of figured out what we could do, what we couldn't do, how we could make it light, how we could make it quiet and breathable. And now it's, it's like that, you know, I wear that as much as the Santi almost. Yeah, when you, when I, I've had it since no, October, and um, I, I have soft shells, not a, I don't wear them a lot hunting, but I did try yours hunting though. The weight to warmth is always the issue with any kind of soft shell. Yeah, sure. And yours just came in at like 18 ounces on my scale, 18 and a half. And thin, not bulky, and very warm. And stretchy and quiet. Very quiet. Yeah. So that was, that was, it, it's unique in that it will work super well in a tree and it works and super breathable and windproof. And so it'll work super well out west too. Oh, absolutely. The, the highlight of, to me for first light is, is always your wool. So your merino wool came out again, the new merino wool, arrow wool. Mm -hmm. Second, this is your second year with it or third? I think our, this is our third year with arrow wool, and this is like our second version of arrow wool. So this, you guys are switching to all nylon merino mix. Yep, we are. What's the reasoning for that? Um, the nylon is a little bit stronger and it dries a little bit faster, and it's allowed us to go back to our because before, so we we were. We were the first guys to print on a uh, what's called intimate blend. You know, a lot of the things that are that are, let's say, a hybrid synthetic wool will be a plated fabric. One side's wool, one side's poly or whatever, right? Gotcha. What we do is we blend them together. It's called intimate blend. So before, with the poly, um, they only made the 37.5 in a poly. Gotcha. Um, so that's what we had to do, and it was quite difficult to print on. We had to do digital printing, which was really expensive. But then we started this project maybe 18 months ago, and we really pressed hard to get 
a 37.5 nylon. Mm -hmm. And what that allowed us to do, the nylon behaves a lot more like the merino, is that we could go back and do our normal uh, printing. So you'll like, feel this, it definitely has a, it's a, it's a much softer feel. Not that the old stuff was bad, and I mean, I don't know, I'm kind of picking the inch out of the pepper here, but you know, <laughs> it, it gets a little bit, you know, I don't know, it, it just it just feels a little better. But it has allowed us to make something that it, 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 it dries faster and it's stronger. And there's a, there was a considerable increase in durability with the poly merino blend. So yeah. you're saying there's going to be another increase with the nylon merino yes, blend. That's right. And another thing that I was excited to see is you jump into a 350 weight on the merino X. Yes, and we fleeced it. So what we got basically is that now the 350 is warmer than the 400 was just because it's a, it's a loftier deal while being lighter at the same time. Nice. You know, um, we'll, we'll talk about that thing. Yeah, we'll go through all that in a yeah, second, yeah. but I was really excited to do that. And then I ran your Puffy pretty much all October, November, December, and we'll jump on the Chamberlain soon, but I think that's an exciting new piece from you guys, and I've been waiting a while to see something like that from you guys. We've talked about that piece for literally five years, um, but, you know, it's just we weren't quite ready. We had to really kind of shore up everything on the, on the synthetic insulation. Like, I didn't want to have holes in the synthetic side, Hey Jordan, I didn't want to have anything on the holes on the synthetic side and then introduced kind of this. I kind of wanted to make sure our synthetic program was tight before we went to a full on, full uh, on down piece. All right, well, let's get on the actual pieces. All right. I'll let you introduce it. Here you go. Okay, so this is the new two, I mean, 150 Merino. Uh, 150. Um, sorry, I choked on that one. So this is the new 150 Arrowwolf. So now in the 150, so we make four weights. We make uh, four weights of wool, two weights of arrow wool, 150 and 200, and then two weights of, of Merino X, we call it. And then we make that a 250 and a 350. So on the 150 uh, arrow wool, we make in, in four styles. We make a hoodie, a zipperless hoodie. We make a quarter zip, a regular crew, and a short sleeve. And the idea behind the, the Arrow wool 150 is, you know, to be it, it's it's a, a, it, it works for base layer for any temperature, but it works best for you know active hunting or just hot weather. Um, sizing for 2018 has changed a little bit. We always kind of had this discrepancy when it was kind of far, but between the thin stuff and the medium and thick, and the you know the thin fit a little bit smaller, the medium and thick fit a little bit larger. What we've done is basically we have made the the all the weights the same. The small, the, the, the next to skin, the super thin, like the 150 and 200 has gotten a little bit bigger, and the 250 and the 300 has gotten a little smaller. So basically everything's made to be you know worn as a layer, but we don't want people having to buy different sizes for different you know. Different so one weights. size, a large is going to fit you through the base to the top. Yes. So. Yes. Um, so that's that with the 150. With the 200, we do it in a, we do the 200 in two styles. We do the 200 in the long sleeve, and then we do uh, both long sleeve. We do it in a crew, and then we do it in a quarter zip. Nice. Um, in the 250, basically what we did is we added a little. We added five, actually less than five percent, but we just say five percent um, spandex. And what it's allowed us to do is basically control the fit a lot better and make it so that the material bounces back. I mean, some people complain, oh, spandex is an inferior material to merino, and it's probably true. That being said, we added just enough to where it really made it a better fitting piece, and it lasts longer, you know, as far as, like, you pull your sleeves up, you take them down, they don't bag out. You know, merino only has so much mechanical stretch i mean natural stretch so it just it works better and literally not nobody could tell you can't tell it dries just as fast i mean you know it's, it's such a small portion portion of spandex but it really does give the it, the piece feels better and fits a lot better in your testing have you noticed any difference between the stink between poly and and nylon is one better than the other Oh, and the other stuff? In the, in yeah, the, sorry, in the X, not the X, but in the uh, arrow wool. In the arrow wool, no. I, I think that, you know, they're very similar. I mean, the nylon might even be better. I don't know. I haven't, you know, had an issue with And we did, so somebody did ask if this material is not, this is merino. This is the same, this is arrow wool. 
Mm -hmm. So somebody I, I, I asked me if that was a poly, and it's not. It's uh, so underneath the pits is is. It's the same thing. It's just eyelided, so it breathes better. So it's merino. It's merino. It's a seventy. Yeah, because I did see where somebody said that was poly, which yeah. isn't the truth. No, it's not. It's uh, I mean whatever you know you could assume that, but it's not. It's the thirty-five sixty-five blend. It just right. is eyelided, so it breathes as you know better. And I, and with I ran that one shirt well over 200 days now and it has never ripped in that area i got a rip on the arm from some brush and that was just right. hard use yeah i mean obviously it's not quite as strong but it's got holes i mean it, it breathes better and it's a protected area that's right arms. yeah that's right so can we talk um, about your 350 yeah so the 350 is the same what we did the, the cool thing about the 350 is so we have the 350 um in a quarter zip and then we have it in the hammer the button style but the 350 has you know the, the old thick stuff used to be 400 we went down to 350 but we fleeced it and i don't know if you can see this but basically fleecing it makes it a little bit loftier um, in essence it makes it warmer for you know the same amount of weight less weight but um like the 350 we found is warmer feels warmer than the 400 and the big question, I don't know why it always revolves around how much spandex is in that. It's so five less than five percent. Just enough. Just enough so it holds it so it holds up, you know. Right. Structure and stuff like that. I mean, at the end of the day, to weave in the spandex is probably more expensive than having well, it's not like some cost cutting thing, right? It's right. such a tiny percentage. But it really does, it just gives it spandex just naturally has more stretch. Yeah, and it gives it if you look at the old chamas, they do kind of drape on you and they you're getting away drape. from that. And what'll happen too is, you know, a lot of times somebody washes them in high heat, just depending on the water they, they, they're 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 we, we got, can, um, we got some can, we got some extra characters in now. <laughs> but um you know, it's funny, too, because people say, well, why would I buy a 350 weight merino? The thing about it is, is that, you know, you wear, say, a 150 under this, and literally your temperature regulation is so much better that you don't have to take stuff off. You don't have to take stuff off, you know, because a lot of people are like, well, why wouldn't I just get a, a, a puffy? And while puffies are great and have, you know, they're far warmer for their weight, even the best regulated puffies like you know with, with with the cone insulation won't breathe nearly as well as something like this you know so it's i don't know if you're going on some super nasty you know seven day and you're like cutting the handle off your toothbrush it's probably isn't a piece but you know for an overnight or whatever you know it's it's or a couple day it's pretty dang nice not to be able to have to shed and take stuff off and put stuff back on i'd great to see the 350 come out yeah all right. Um, yeah, I'll have to jump over onto the chamberlain. Hey, sir, can we jump in there real quick? Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. We're jumping on to the prize of the party. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. All right, so this is the chamberlain. Basically, we wanted a jacket um, that weighed under two pounds, and this weighs well, weigh, well under two pounds, weighs about 25 ounces, that we... Um, like the classic glassing jacket like you know you hike in in the dark you sit there you can't move for you know till 10 or whatever till everything's secure and bedded down and it's freezing ass cold but then when you hunt you're going to take it off and you're going to put it in your backpack so you don't want to carry around a bunch of weight you know so basically you model it after a you know a lot of like the 8,000 meter like full on heavy duty down parkas um what we what's unique about this is that we blend at 37.5 in this so generally speaking the biggest downfall of down is that it doesn't breathe and you dwr you treat down and it breathes even worse um, not not that this piece is made for some super active hunt but if it, even if you have to sit there for hours like if it doesn't breathe it starts to create kind of its kind its own microclimate which gets clammy gotcha. um, so we we this is really a new process, basically, but the, it's, uh, it's 35%, um, 37.5 synthetic, 65%, 800 fill power down. We use, for a large, we use about 330 grams, about 11, roughly 11 ounces of down, so it's got tons of down. Mixed into each panel? Or is it separated between mapped out? So all, all throughout the whole jacket. Gotcha. So on the body of this, we have baffles. So basically, when you make a baffle like this, instead of sewing it through like this there's a baffle that goes from one to the other so it doesn't make thin spots the whole time does that make sense yeah so, you know you've got your baffle and it connects 
on the arm and sew them through. Just allowed us to make it. It's easier to make. The arms definitely don't need to be as warm as the body. Um, it's lighter, simpler, less seams, you know, less moving parts. But the my question, I guess, is the down and the uh, 37.5 mixed into each? Yes, gotcha. all together. Okay. And so it created a piece, a down piece that's, um, I mean, it's super warm and it breathes pretty dang well for a down jacket, yet it still packs super small and it's light. I mean, you wore it. It's yeah, that's small. what I was going to say is my biggest thing is it has to break the wind. And I do lots and lots of glassing. I do a lot of long range hunting. And he said the big thing, good thing about down, or the bad thing about down, it doesn't breathe. Well, I say on the reverse side, the great thing about down is it blocks the wind extremely oh, well. For sure. So I'm always in the wind. And I, I wanted to compare this straight to the Kefaru Lost Park Parka. And this, this is a warmer piece. It's not as waterproof as the Lost Park, but if you're looking for the warmest piece, this baby beats it handily. It's, so. Yeah, it's not waterproof at all. I mean, it's right. got a DWR coating if it's, you know, hopefully if it's if it's really cold and it's, you know, snowy, it's just gonna bounce out. It's cold snow, it's not like it's- Right, but it did do, I just wore it in the rain to see what it did. And I was out there for four hours and it didn't come through and it didn't flatten it. I mean, it's got a nice, it's got a solid DWR coating, but it's definitely, it doesn't have a laminate or anything like that. It's, like, it's a freaking heater. You put that 350X underneath it right. and this, it's a heater. Yes. Yeah. Now, God forbid you put the seek over the top of it and you're, uh, yeah. you're shitting in tall cotton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a good combo, especially for guys that are doing like these mid-winter, like, right. you know, full on, you know. Nasty. It's an impressive, I was glad to see it. Yeah. You want to jump excited. on and talk about your corrugate real quick? Yeah. Right beside, behind you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had a lot of guys that would go hunting in places that, uh, like Texas or Arizona, that were just super unfriendly to Merino. Like, it's hot ish warmish so they don't want they didn't want some big heavy duty layer but they basically wanted a technical tough layer so they'd wear you know 150 and maybe it was a little bit windy or but you know a lot of nasty brushes up so they went to this so we came out with this and it's basically the same material as the quarry at Panth, the nylon stretchy super tough but it's basically creates a shell that you can wear for you know a little bit of warmth and a lot of protection gotcha all right let's yeah. jump to the the, uh... Oh yeah. What's up? <laughs> Go for it. Am I in the camera? Yep. All right. So this is the new. Uh, not the chair. Oh yeah. Sorry. So catalyst. this is the new catalyst uh, system. Um, basically, we're, we're kind of resistant. Um, to make a soft shell, another soft shell system in that, you know, we really wanted to do something that was unique. And after trying a bunch of different stuff out, we kind of came to the conclusion that, we, that there's room out there to make something right. cool. I mean, there's a lot of our tariffs, a lot of companies make great stuff, but they, there's a lot of features that they use that they don't make hunting clothes, right? At the end of the day, you know, for us, having something that's quite durable and super quiet, but also stays out of the way for bow strings and stuff like that. There's a lot of things that are unique in that respect, you know, like, so, I and mean, we have that question all the time, like why wouldn't I buy, you know, an Arc'teryx or a Mammoth, but at the end of the day, you know, they're, and they're great products, but, it, but we make hunting specific stuff, right. right? So you'll notice like, you know, our hoods are a lot more flexible. They're not made to wear with a, with a helmet under, right. you know, they, they fit well. They're not they tactical, turn. they're hunting. Right, they're for hunting. They have good peripheral. All of our sleeves are cut to where they're not going to get in the way of a bowstring. And most, and most, the two most important things is that we have to develop camouflage. One and two, or uh, probably in the inverse, but one is probably we need to make quiet pieces. Right. Like it's got to be quiet, which is not even you know proper. And so the idea with this was that we wanted a, just a super technical soft shell. We wanted a piece that would cut the wind, provide a solid amount of warmth, not as warm, not as warm as a lot of like laminated ones, but also be highly, highly breathable. Right. And that's the thing. It's like this. You could really put out a hard effort before you got to take it off. Like it does, it doesn't have that, that clammy feeling, you know. But it still cuts the wind. So I mean, that's kind of a difficult thing to do. Because a lot of times, if you coat stuff with a wind stopper, I, I'm, I'm not picking on a wind stopper. Right. It does a great job, but it, it creates some problems. It gets hot, 
it doesn't breathe super well, and it's kind of heavy. So we're like, can we actually do this just by you know developing a fabric with our developer that actually cuts wind enough and breathes? And I think we did. I'm not a soft shell guy, but in the last last two months of the season, I got the jacket from Kenton, and the two things that jumped out on me is. If you have um, Jetstream, for instance, or the Bora from Cryptic, which I'm comparing these three together in a review I'm doing, at what no matter the temperature, five degrees, 10 degrees, you never hear crinkle out of this, and you do get a little crinkle out of a Jetstream or a Bora. The other thing, when Kenton said it didn't have a wind stopper, I was like, hmm, I'll, I don't know how that's gonna work because that was really the staple of what a soft shell would be for me. It obviously is not gonna help you a lot in weatherproof or waterproof, but the block in the wind was what I wanted or however they put this together, it is extremely wind resistant, which is the most impressive part to me, adding on that for the weight, it's super warm, which is, it's kind of crazy. So that's my 10 cents on the jacket that I've, since I've used it for two months, so. Yeah, well, like I said, we spent through a ton of different materials and a ton of development time, so I'm pretty excited. It seems like uh, a lot of guys are like, it. it's happy to hear you on that. I love it. I love it for a soft shell. Will I use it every hunt? No. Will I use it yeah. later in the season? Yes, Perfect. I will. I want to jump on the sauce tooth one. Let's get one more thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the pants. Oh, too. I forgot about the pants. Yeah, so we have pants now. This is our first, not our first, but one of our, you know, a lot of times we have, um, we had kind of a gap. You know, you either went straight up to the north branches, which were pretty heavy duty or you wore you know the, our guides or the our obsidians with long johns this is kind of our first like late season pant where you know it's never going to get warmer than probably 40 degrees all day so you know for these for the, under 40. i would say i mean you know if unless you're in a tree and then you can wear them to 50 no problem right, right. but if you're going to be active i think that um you know you don't want you don't want you don't want to over right. but you know it's like it's, it, for the bow hunters this has no noise at any yeah. temperature. This had zero noise and I hunted in it five degrees with a, it was probably under under zero with the wind chill, zero noise, yeah. zero. And that so. was uh, that was huge on the list. Um, and I think a lot of the guys that, a lot of the tree stand guys are gonna really like this piece because it's quiet and it's super versatile. It's, it's, right. it's not that often that you can get a piece that works super well in a tree and works super well out west. So there, the north branch is going away. These are replacing yeah. it basically. Basically, yeah. So that, yeah. that was a question like five times. The north branch is going away. No tears, no crying. <laughs> All right, let's jump on that saw tooth. All right. Hmm. And that's the saw tooth vest, too. I'll yeah, jump on that up there. Cool. You can do it right now. All right. Just get us in there. Get, get our beautiful faces. <laughs> the talent. I'll, I'll, I'll jump on this before Kenton jumps on this. I said this I've said this 10 times. Going back to our podcast last last uh, April, I thought this was the stupidest thing First Light has ever came out with. Fast forward my hunting season, I wore this jacket every hunt I went on. And uh, outside of laying on the ground and letting my seat it, I love this jacket. Um, it's a jacket that you can wear as an outer piece during archery season, it's quiet enough, to, no issues with that. It breaks the wind enough. You can wear it while you're pack. You have your pack on. You can. You it breathes well, so you don't you know get really that hot. The 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 place I thought it would fail me is layering it, I, and it because I'm going back to the borealis and cryptic. The cryptic borealis is too thick to layer. This is thin enough and it's warm enough to put into your layering piece. So I end up wearing it all the time. And I'm a fat kid, so during my hard, when I was getting it, I had to take it off. Or I had to take everything off but this piece. So. If you're looking for a piece that you don't know what it fits in for and you buy it and you wear it every time, this is your piece. So don't be dumb like me, get this piece. <laughs> they also came out with the jacket or the vest and the probably maybe the steel of the show, the hooded uh, house that. Yeah. Want to talk a little about those two pieces, Kevin? Yeah, I'll yeah. I'll shut up. No, no, I, I love it. So um, yeah, this piece basically, um, we, the, you know, we really strive to have pieces that work in a large variety of terrain. like. It's easy, you know, you get on the internet and people are like, well, you know, uh, they're kind of, they get a little bit obsessed with like absolute weight. But the thing is, is that if you've got to bring an extra piece because something's not versatile or you're constantly transitioning in and out, which is obviously a total pain. We've got a, you know, you got your bino 
holders on, you've got a backpack, like if you're constantly like, I'm hot, I'm cold, I'm hot, I'm cold. That's a that's a real detractor, even if you could save, you know, maybe the a half a pound out of your whole kit. And that's where this piece was like the weight doesn't really tell the story. It's not that heavy, but at the end of the day, as you said, it is a piece that you can wear in a huge rally. You can be putting a pretty hard effort, unzip it, get to the top, zip it up, put the hood on, and you're pretty good to go for you know a solid glassing session before you either got to stay there and really get something on, or you're going to uh, or you're going to uh, keep walking and, and you know whatever. So. Uh, Following this piece, we came out with this piece, which is basically a vest version of this. No uh, hood. Also, with the Halstead now, the Halstead has kind of been resized a little bit um, to kind of be in line with all the new sizing, because we're making a super hard effort to have consistency. Obviously, now that we're, everything's direct, we want to minimize the back and forth. So we're really trying to do our best to have a consistent size of one. So the Halstead now comes in a hoodie, and then it also comes in a non-hoodie full zip. Right, do you guys have anything for sale at the show? Yes, we have all the 2000, well, the majority of the 2017 inline stuff and stuff that's going away over there. Do you guys, so your new stuff, the pre order, when is that all going to happen? March, I believe March 1st, we're shooting for to have open the pre order and then kind of like always to have a delivery in late June. June, so they're you know, they're missing the bear season. That was one of the questions. They won't have the pre-order stuff out before bear. No, or we won't have the brand. For those losers at turkey hunting, you're not going to get your first light view for turkey season. That being said, we do have some POs of the pants coming in. I think before bear, definitely in the sawtooth, but we're not going to have uh, loads of the 18 stuff. 